Hey beauties, welcome back to my channel. Today I am going to be trying out something brand new from P. Louise Makeup Academy. I first saw this on Nikki Tutorials channel. It's the P. Louise Eye Base and then also the P. Louise Palette. This is what it looks like right here. I had never heard of this person previously, so I went and checked them out. They have amazing eye looks. Like, so beautiful, very intricate, intricate, very dramatic, but really, really well done. And because Nikki Tutorials is what I consider to be like the eyeshadow queen, I decided I really wanted to try these products out for myself. I'm gonna go through all the details about each of the products and then I'm gonna get into this tutorial. I did two different ways, one without setting the base, how Paige, which P. Louise does hers, and then how I would typically do my own. I just kinda wanted to try things out. So this is the base right here. The current size is 10 milliliters, but I believe that she is coming out with larger sizes as well as more colors. This is in the shade Rumor. It is 10 GPB, but in US dollars that translates to 1409 from what I gathered via Google. <laughs> And then the palette retails for 40 GPB and 56.34 US dollars. And then shipping is 15.99, which translates to 22.52 US dollars. So quite a bit of money for shipping. And I did get charged an extra 285. Sorry, I have everything written down. The first total was 95.10 before the 285 was tacked on an international fee. So just keep that in mind. It's a little bit off to what I googled but so basically I spent a hundred dollars on both of these products being shipped and just buying them in general. The first five shadows in each of the rows are a matte finish and then the other two have a nice sheen to them. I'm going to go ahead and show you guys the swatches. For the first row we have P. Louise, Sunkissed, Burnt, Latte, Queen, and Slay. And then for the second row we have Charm, Trippin, Bestie, Contour, Martini, and Prin. The palette comes in a cardboard package. It has a nice mirror in there, but I do have to say it's a little on the iffy side. Not bad, not horrible, but there are some things to note. Like right here, my, I guess whatever is covering the mirror is coming up. And it did have a chemical scent. When I first opened this, it was pretty overwhelming. Kind of like that issue that happened with the Kylie Cosmetics. But the difference is the Kylie one for me still kind of had that hint no matter how long I left it open. I left this open one night overnight and I, I barely smell anything now. So I, I don't think it's the shadows. I think it's something to do with the glue in the package. But it is something to consider if smells or anything like that bother you. Now Paige P. Louise was known for the MAC Select cover-up using that as a base. I never did that trend, it just wasn't my thing. And she felt like it kind of skipped, it wasn't as good, so she created her own. Basically her technique is to go straight in onto the eyeshadow primer. Instead of setting it, like I always set with MAC Blanc type, I find it to be easier, but I do understand like the logic behind this. Basically if you're putting pigment straight onto the sticky base, you're gonna get more of an intense color payout. But I'm gonna show you guys both ways without setting it and with setting it and see what you guys think. Now I'm gonna jump into this tutorial and then I will give you guys my thoughts towards the end. Be aware that yes, this is a look that I've done several times. It's nothing new, but I wanted to do something I was kind of comfortable in because it's the way I apply the shadows is not the way I typically would, but I kind of wanted to go more along her lines. No, I don't do it perfectly, but I still wanted to test it out. So let's go ahead and get into this. I'm gonna start off applying the base right here. I put just a tiny little amount on my little dish. I have already applied the base and then put MAC Blanc type over this side because I know not everybody does not like to set their primer, so we want to see how both sides work with it set and without it set. In the video I watched, she used something more like the MAC 239 to apply, but I've also seen the MAC 252. Use whatever brush you'd like. I'm going to go in with the 239 and I'm first going to swipe it on. And this is definitely like thick enough to clean up the brow. 
When I watched her video, she put on quite a bit of product, way more than what I'm used to. So I'm gonna put on just a little bit more than what I'm used to. And I'm just starting off by applying it basically to the lid. Just going a little short strokes because that's easier for me. Do whatever you want. We will be adding more after this even. I'm tapping around the edges with my finger and I will clean up after I'm done with my eye. But you can definitely use a brush, a fluffy brush to blend out the edges. It's even easier if you do your makeup after your eye, but clearly I didn't. Now I'm gonna go in with just a little bit more and I'm going to tap this all over. And again, I'm just going by what she did in the video. I'm just trying to kind of duplicate that. And by tapping, I know that you are really pressing the product right where you want it. It's going to also help blend so you don't have any streak marks from swiping. I've got the base down, it's nice and even. It's not creasing right now. And this eye has been on for over an hour and it hasn't creased. Like when I go like this, it looks like it is creased right here just because I have a fold in my eye. But when I put my eye all the way down, it's not creased. I'm gonna give this just a few minutes and I wanna see if it does crease without any shadows on top of it. Clearly you're gonna put this on, put your shadows on and it's probably not gonna crease, but I just wanna see because my Tarte Shape Tape, I have to set it immediately or it will crease immediately. I'm back, it's been about 10 minutes and it has creased just a tiny amount this is way less than what my Tarte Shape Tape would crease. I just wanted to see what would happen. I'm gonna take my brush, I'm not taking any additional product, and I'm just gonna make sure this is all nice and even before I start with my shadows. I'm gonna start off with the shade Burnt, and I'm gonna kinda of try to do this her way, like not doing my transition first. I'm just going to start with the shadow on a Wayne Goss number 19, and I'm first just kinda of tapping the shadow into place. And it's definitely holding on to that pigment. This is a pretty color. And I'm gonna work this right around the edge. She uses a tiny little brush like this. A MAC 221 would also work. I'm just gonna kind of just go off what she does. I've noticed Nikki Tutorials does this a lot with her shadows in general as well. Now that I've got that down right here, I'm gonna kind of just start blending it out soft little circular motions and kind of tapping. It's a little easier to tap. I do find it's grabbing a hold of the product just a little bit, but not bad. Same brush, same color. I'm just going back in with just a little bit more and I'm gonna deepen it up a little bit. Again, those little tapping motions, just right in this outer V and kind of upward. I will say this color is looking far more pink than like this coral that it is in the palette. So it's blending out and losing some of its coral aspect. I'm using a different brush. This is the MAC 221 on this side, just because I don't want to contaminate my brush. <laughs> I want to see how it works with the already set eye, but I'm going to use the same technique applying it. Strangely, I find that this side looks a little bit more, like it's not at, it's not true to the color in the pan, but it's more true than this side. I don't, know, I don't know if it's gonna show on camera, but this does have more coral than this side. I'm gonna add just a little bit more. I didn't use any more product on this side than I did this one, so I don't know. That was kind of strange. Having to tap out this inner corner right here because I was getting a little creasy and I don't want it to be creased before I go in with the shadow. Same brush and now I'm going to go in with P. Louise. It's that like yellow, sh yellow is shade in there. I'm going to start by going right around the edge, tapping it in, in small little circles. I'm going to bring this further to the inner corner though. That blended out really easily. So I didn't, there's a slight drag of the brush, but it's very slight. I expected it to be far more than that. Same thing, opposite side. 
Wayne Goss number 18 and Trippin. I'm gonna start on this outer corner and bring it in. And this is just gonna help diffuse. I feel like that completely took away <laughs> the last shade I did. So I'm gonna go in with this same brush and put it back. This is the shade P. Louise. And same thing on the opposite side. Thoughts so far. This one looks slightly more vivid, but this side looks slightly more blended. I'm just gonna kinda tweak both of them, add a little bit of color here, blend a little bit more here, and just fast forward me doing it, but that's what I'm doing. Wayne Goss number 19 in Latte. I'm going to tap this on the outer corner. As well as work it into the crease. I do find myself having to build this up quite a bit. It blends away slightly whenever I go into the crease. Nothing major, but just something to note. Same thing, opposite side. This is how we are looking so far. Delium 777, and this is Soleil. I'm gonna, <clears throat> excuse me, I'm sorry. I'm gonna start on this inner corner, tapping over the lid. I'm just gonna use the same brush for the opposite side. And I'm gonna touch up the brown. MAC 242 and Charm right at the brow arch. P. Louise on the lower lash line. The, I don't have any of the base underneath my eyes. And this is a Wayne Goss number 20. Burnt a little closer to the lower lash line. Latte on the outer corner. I've got to build this shade up just a little bit. MAC 228 and Prin on the inner corner. Now I'm gonna go smoke out some liner and add mascara, but before I do, here is the finished product on both sides. Take a glimpse, see which one you like better. So which eye did you guys prefer? The one without setting the base or the one with setting the base. Personally, I don't see a big enough difference between the two to warrant spending the extra time because for me personally, it is a little bit extra time trying to, you know, blend and put it specifically. She does it way better than I do. <laughs> Maybe I just need to master that technique. I don't know, but I just find this to be easier. And these shadows, I, I just don't see a big enough difference. Like to me, this is popping enough to not have to take the time in doing it this way. Now I do see this technique working when you have an eyeshadow palette that isn't as pigmented or you need some more oomph out of it. It's definitely much better to go in straight onto your primer. I've done this before in the past. I used to never set my soft ochre paint pot. Now the eye base compared to soft ochre paint pot or even the eye base I've been using, which is just Tarte Shape Tape, I never had a problem with the paint pot, but I understand that a lot of people thought that it dried out too quickly. Again, I never really had an issue with it, but I've been using Tarte Shape Tape and just setting it. And I will say the Tarte Shape Tape definitely creases way faster than the P. Louise base. I do like the color of it even. I'm gonna show you guys a swatch of the P. Louise up against a light neutral. I'm an NC20. For me, this base works perfectly. I will definitely be able to clean up my brow. It just looks really nice and it's smooth. It's not thick like the paint pot, so you don't end up with that added texture. And that's what I have found that I don't really like out of a primer is when you get that added texture on the eye or that crepiness. I like that this doesn't do it. It is very nice and smooth. I am not one that typically creases after I have either A, set my primer, or B, have the shadows on top. So I'm gonna insert a little clip right here. This is at the end of the day, so you can see what the shadows look like. If they creased, again, I don't typically have an issue with it, but you guys can see how the shadows and the base held up. I am definitely going to continue to use this. I like it a lot, and I'm definitely curious to see what other shade she comes out with because I don't think this one's going to work on super fair skin if you're looking to make your eyeshadow pop or even darker skin tones. This is pretty light. 
As for the eyeshadow palette, keep in mind this is a first impressions. Of the shades I use, I think this palette is really nice, easy to work with, not hard to blend out. The colors are gorgeous. Somebody mentioned on Instagram that they would have rather have seen this in the fall. Completely agree. I would love to see a spring summer palette from her. The only thing I want to say about it, again, you got to beware of the smell when it first comes and then like this is kind of coming up. But shadow quality, you do have to intensify just a little bit. Like this shade right here, Latte. This shade right here worked better in my opinion without the base being set, which is her whole thing. <laughs> but these colors are right up my alley. I can definitely see myself getting some use out of it. And this shade right here, Queen, that looks real promising. The more metallic shades in here, I wish they would have bumped it up just a little bit. Of course, you can do that with MAC Fix Plus. That's just me being nitpicky, but it's something I wanted to note. Overall, I'm happy with both of my purchases. I love to support somebody else in the industry, especially somebody that talented. If you haven't checked her out, definitely do so. And I will keep you guys updated on the palette. If I change my opinion at all, I will let you guys know. But for now, let me know if this was something you were interested in, if you're picking it up, if it's a pass, yada yada. And I'll see you guys in my next video. Bye, guys.